Hey all geeks, welcome to another video. So today we will be discussing all about vitamins. So vitamins, the other name for those vitamins and the associated deficiencies we will be discussing in today's lecture. So guys, thank you so much for commenting down below and for your beautiful messages. This video was requested by this person. I'll link her up on the screen. Thank you so much for requesting videos. Keep giving me ideas and supporting my channel. So without much ado, let's get right into it. So let us go to the first vitamin that is vitamin A. Now vitamin A is also called as retinol and basically as the name suggests retinol, it is actually associated with the retina that is with the eyes so the deficiency of vitamin a causes color blindness second is called as xerophthalmia which is basically a progressive eye disease and xerophthalmia actually is the drying out of the tear ducts of the eye and the drying of the conjunctiva it also leads to night blindness so these are the associated deficiencies of the disease. Next one is vitamin B1 which is also called as thymine and the deficiency of this is causes a disease called as beriberi. Now beriberi is of two types. One is called as a dry beriberi which basically causes the improper functioning of the circulatory system and the heart. So it is related to the circulatory system dry beriberi. Whereas wet beriberi is associated with muscle weakness and neuropathy. Next one is vitamin B2. Now vitamin B2 is riboflavin. Now deficiency of B2 leads to something called as angular stomatitis, chiliosis and red eye. Now what is angular stomatitis? Basically, it is the lesions at the corner of the mouth, okay? And chiliosis is swollen or cracked lips. So, cracking of lips is chiliosis and angular stomatitis, stomatitis is lesions at the corner of the mouth. Also, red eye is observed. Now, vitamin B2 is actually necessary for the proper development of the skin, the lining of the GI tract, and basically formation of blood cells. Now, therefore, you can see that the deficiency leads to skin disorders. Next one is vitamin B3 called as niacin. Now, niacin deficiency leads to the four Ds. What are the four Ds? Diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia, death. Diarrhea, dermatitis, dementia and death possibly death if it goes to excess, excess deficiency, okay? Now, the most prominent deficiency disease associated is pellagra. Now, pellagra is associated with the darkening of the tongue. So, eventually the color of the tongue becomes darker and darker and it also leads to bleeding as well. Now, other disorders include whitening of hair, mental retarded, retardedness and dermatitis, okay? Then next one we have vitamin B5 which is called as the pantothenic acid. Now basically pantothenic acid or the vitamin B5 is essential for the synthesis of coenzyme A and acyl carrier protein. And coenzyme A is needed for fatty acid metabolism. Deficiency of this leads to insomnia that is can't get sleep properly at night and irritability. Next one is B6. Vitamin B6 that basically is called as pyridoxine and pyridoxine is responsible for creation of RBCs in the production of neurotransmitters, product metabolism of carbohydrate, protein and fats. See, one thing you need to remember Every vitamin B factors or all of these vitamin Bs are very, very essential in two things. One, metabolism of carbohydrate, protein and fats and two, in the creation of RBCs. 
now vitamin b6 is associated with anemia anemia and skin diseases also depression okay so this is about vitamin b6 shoot are yaar ye kya ho gaya no my charging is going to die good the next vitamin is vitamin b7 now vitamin b7 is commonly known as biotin it has another name that is vitamin h okay now basically biotin is necessary again for the metabolism of carbohydrate fats and amino acids deficiency of which causes paralysis body pain and hair fall next one is vit vitamin b11 now vitamin b11 is also called as salicylic acid now this is basically called as teryl hepta glutamic acid and it is known as the chick factor okay because deficiency of these leads to the loss of feathers from the chicken therefore it is called as the chick factor now salicylic acid you all must have heard it is usually used in context of many of the creams that are associated with treating acne or basically uh, different types of serums that are used because salicylic acid penetrates into the skin where it basically is involved in deep cleaning of the pores okay now that is one special point about salicylic acid the salicylic acid is also needed for the development of the fetus okay and uh, the deficiency of which therefore will cause impaired growth in children it also leads to weight loss diarrhea and anemia okay so this is about the deficiencies associated with the vitamin b11 next is b9 now b9 is called as folate and again it is involved in basically the production of new cells new cells like wbc rbc and also it prevents the changes in dna and now how is that basically folate derivative the derivative of folic acid is called as tetrahydrofolate now tetrahydrofolate is basically prepared from this is a derivative of folate okay now a deficiency in folate causes weakness insomnia and as well as dementia okay so these are the things about b9 guys if you all have reached this far in my video and if these videos are helpful to you please don't forget to like the video and subscribe to my channel for similar content and definitely do give me video recommendation and ideas that really helps me to make videos relevant to you okay now let's go on to the next one that is vitamin b12 now vitamin b12 is also called as cyanocobalamin cyanocobalamine deficiency leads to atrophic gastritis that is basically inflammation of the wall of the stomach so it becomes very thin okay next one is megaloblastic anemia now pernicious anemia is basically a type of megaloblastic anemia what are the differences between the two on what are the similarities so both the similarity is that anemia is basically the in like incapacity to deliver enough oxygen so basically in both conditions there is a problem with the rbcs now what is the difference in pernicious anemia the wb the red blood cell count is low because the body cannot basically absorb enough b12 okay and what happens in megaloblastic anemia basically a factor called as the intrinsic factor released by the stomach is not produced and therefore the rbcs in megaloblastic anemia 
they become larger in size than normal and they basically have an impaired dna synthesis due to which they basically do not undergo nuclear division therefore the rbcs appear larger than normal so both of these type of anemias are like megaloblastic anemia under that you have pernicious so this is basically pernicious anemia is due to the inability to absorb vitamin b12 then you have ankle edema that is the swelling of the ankle next is vitamin c which is called as ascorbic acid and deficiency leads to scurvy swelling of gums bleeding of the gums okay next is vitamin d it is called as calciferol now vitamin d further has many sub type sub types like ergo calciferol that is b2 coli calciferol that is b3 now a deficiency of vitamin d leads to rickets rickets also two other symptoms called as osteomalacia and osteoporosis now osteo in both indicate something related to the bone now osteomalacia is basically soft bones wherein the bones fail to harden whereas osteoporosis is basically the weakening of the bone okay next one is vitamin e vitamin e is called as tocopherol now there are eight different types of vitamin e however your body can only absorb the alpha it can only metabolize the alpha tocopherol that is basically metabolized by your liver the rest of them are secreted outside of your are excreted outside of your body okay so remember only alpha tocopherol that is metabolizable by the liver now usually in a in a regular life it is very rare to see a vitamin e deficiency because of insufficient intake in the diet usually it is a manifestation of some other symptom of some other disease so in diseases like those associated with some problem in the fatty acid metabolism or in patients with cystic fibrosis or crohn's this condition is formed again a vitamin a deficiency can lead to something called as hemolytic anemia which is basically seen in premature babies so those babies that are born premature at the end prime at the end crucial two months that time there are the stores of vitamin e that are basically loaded into the fetus is uh, body but however because they are prematurely born this store is not able to get you know produced there and therefore what happens is the lipid membranes of the rbcs they get easily oxidized by oxygen due to which there is a continuous loss of the rbcs and that is called as the hemolytic anemia and the last vitamin vitamin k called as phytonidone phytonidione which is basically responsible in the non clotting of blood okay so that's it from me for today with all of this vitamins hopefully you've liked this video and that's it i'll see you in my next one bye